Hey viewers, if you've been to my channel, you've lately seen this homemade battle bot in some older videos. This uh, video is just an update on a few minor improvements I've done to it in the last uh, year or so. Um, the weapon system's pretty much stayed the same, but it's the drive system that I've uh, overhauled. And, uh, well, I'll start back here. Um, I don't remember in my previous video if this side had the same drive or not, but that's been on for quite some time. It's this one over here that I've changed out. So now it's a fairly good sized motor down there and it's a complete gear set. Before there was a manual gear that was going down in the notch piece of wood underneath the motor and I had problems with gear slipping and eventually when I was doing some resoldering I hit the plastic gear with the soldering tip and melted the gears so some gears are missing. That was a nightmare. So now it's just a complete gearbox. No more slipping. Faster, more powerful, bigger motor, just all around stronger. But um, my problem was is that this controller is out of a 9.6 volt RC boat which kind of limits me and my power I can put to the wheels I mean I, I can run it about like 10 and a half maybe 11 volts but I don't want to push the circuit board any, too much further than that for risk of burning it out or overheating it it wasn't meant for that voltage so I had to come up with an idea or a way to put more power to the drive motors but not risk burning this out. So what I've done is I've completely isolated um, completely isolated the power going to the going to the controller and going to the motors. So now the controller gets about 9.6 or 10 volts and the drive motors get the full 12 to 13 volts that the lead acid batteries put out and down the road if I can if I can swap out larger batteries for smaller ones and double the voltage I could put 24 volts to these motors and go twice as fast <clears throat> but actually uh, isolating them was really tricky some of you might have seen one of these before it's uh, like a single pole contactor or a, a relay it's got a 24 volt coil and it's got a set of points. This actually got two sets of points. Some of them have one, some of them have two. And um, I needed four of these. So if I come around to the front here, I'm going to try and set this up. Yeah. Now these are actual contactors. These are these are contactors you'll see in in full size heat pumps and whatnot. They run the compressors and whatnot. Now again, they're all 24 volts, but doing a little testing, they actually will pull in at about four to six volts DC. And I've actually made I've actually made it even lower by taking them apart and putting slightly weaker springs in they pop them up now these still pop up all freely but they don't the coals don't have to pull so hard to get them to pull down and snap so basically each set of, there's four contactors and two of them is for each motor so like for example like this one here might run that motor forward. This one here might run that same motor in reverse. And the same goes for this one. This one might run the other motor forward and this one back here might run that motor in reverse. And the only way I could actually get this to work to make the thing turn and not have both of them go are these little buggers. Anyone that works with electronics will know what, exactly what those are. Diodes. They only let power flow one way. 
So when I when I get my when I use my controller and say I wanted to want to go to the right, and while I'm holding gas or forward, I mean, one motor is going to have to stop. So when I do that. These here only let the power go one way, so if it's trying to turn left, the player DC reverses, which means it can't go through here, and it and the contactor lets go. It it loses its contact. And now I'll kind of demonstrate this here in a second, but I got to set the set the bot up so it doesn't move all over the place. All right, I got it off the ground. I've also taken the weapon off so you can have a better look. So, when I just want to go forward, I'll see if I can show you guys this. I don't know how well the light is. So if you look at this one here, now if you notice, this one here See if I can get some light in there so you guys can see. There's a little bit of light. That one does not pull in, but if I go reverse, so that one controls reverse. And I think this one here is doing it too. You can't, you can't actually see it, it's inside. But that one there is forward, and so is this one here. Now if I wanted, to, now you see the wheels are going the same way. Now if I want to turn, it's not easy to do here, holding the camera and trying to <laughs> use two fingers to do this. So what's happening is, So it's probably the middle one stopping. Now if I go the other way, and same goes for reverse. So it's it's better this way because you're you're isolating this and not risking overloading it. Um, that way, you know, you can give the, the wheel, drive wheels its full 12 volts. And um, I think it's just a better better way of doing it. And if anyone asked me for a wiring diagram, God forbid, I really couldn't draw this up. It took like all of my brain power to kind of figure this out. I kind of had to do it as I went, and um, but for any of you that are, you know, into BattleBots and just kind of want to do something as a hobby, with no real intention of fighting in an actual fight, um, using contactors would be the way to go if you want to get more voltage to your drive. The same could be done for your weapon too. I could put a contactor in here. Unfortunately, this remote doesn't have multiple signals. So, there's no if there were a button on here or something that I could push in to run the weapon, I would. If I need a much fancier remote. But it could be done. You could run a contactor from your batteries, have your points go from your batteries to your your motor terminals, then have your contactor coil Going to um, going to the right power source, like say 12 volts or 9.6 volts, and that goes to the contactor coil and over to your battery and to your controller, which in this case is this here. Or it would have to be a second controller. I'm not sure. I do have. I do have other controllers. That's out of a truck. That's that's also out of a truck. There's one there. As you can see, there's a 
in there. So I mean, it's it's a better way to isolate the voltages if you don't want to risk damaging something and you want to get more more power to your wheels or to your weapon. It's definitely the right way to go. And like I say, these are just standard two pole 24 volt AC contactors you'll see in heat pumps, uh, anything that would where you need to separate control voltage from line voltage, like 24 volts and 240 volts. But uh, so yeah, so it's just a little update of the bot. Better drive, more voltage to the drive, better power isolation. And I've got a minor signal problem. I'm not sure why. I don't know why it's doing that, but uh, I'll figure it out. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope this helps somebody.